All right, hey everyone, Riley here from becominganelectrician.com. In this video, we will be continuing on with our roughing in series for electricians. Again, you guys can check out the playlist I have. It's gonna list it all in order of how we have approached this so far. So we've talked about boxing, which includes installing scabs. So a scab is just a piece of the same size of wood just to build out the, the box a little bit. So for example, if this is the door frame, you don't want the box too close to the door frame. You wanna have a little bit of a space there, okay? Uh, also, we talked about drilling, pulling wire, stapling, okay, and also protection plates. And in this video, we will be doing what's called cutting in, okay? Now, this is a really important part of the electrical process. Pretty much all of these parts are pretty important because it makes the finishing stage, because finishing comes after roughing in. Roughing in is this stage where we box, pull wire, um, enter the wires in the box and splice them. We call for inspection and then if we are approved, the insulators and the drywallers come, they seal up the walls, then we are left with a box and our, and our wires. Once paint is on, we would then install our devices, cover plates, and we're done. Okay, that's pretty much the whole electrical process. So there's roughing in and finishing. And so this is called cutting in now of the rough-in process. And I've seen a lot of tutorials where homeowners are teaching you how to do electrical and they're just entering the wires directly in the box. You do not want to do that, okay? You want to have a bit of what's called a service loop, just like that, okay? And what happens is when you enter these wires in, if anything happens, when the drywaller cuts the hole with their, with their router and they're very, very loud, it sounds like you're at the dentist, okay? It's called a router. If they cut the box, the drywall goes over. Sometimes our wires get nicked and if you enter in your wire just like this and your wire got nicked, you won't have any extra, okay? So this is called a service loop. And you don't need to have them big. You know, you just want them kind of controlled and maintained. And then what I would do is you just put your, you know, your hand right there and you can strip your wire. There's many ways you guys can strip wire. You guys can check out my other videos, but we're gonna keep it really simple. And um, I personally like to use an X-Acto knife. Now, I highly, highly caution you if you are gonna use an X-Acto knife to strip your wire because you can damage your conductors, okay? So this is the wire jacket. In here we have, so this is 14-2. There is a black, there is a white, and then your bond wire. The reason why they call it 14-2 is because there's only two insulated wires. The bond wire is your bare wire. And this is not grounding, it is bonding, okay? Grounding only happens at one area of the home and that's at your main panel. And your, your ground is actually your neutral, okay? All right. So we already have our label. You can see that we have the line, which is telling us it's power. We wanna make sure that you're labeling up higher so that when we strip here, we're not just removing the work that we just did. And you can see also the switch leg, switch leg right here. So we know that that goes up to the light. And you can see if I'm gonna strip the jacket, the label still stays there. Many people, they label down here and it's just a waste of time because now I'm gonna cut it off. You should be relabeling so that you know what it is later. So. To strip the wire, I will show you that. So what I do is we have our service loop. I think that's a pretty generous service loop. Again, that allows us to easily pull wire into the box. And we'll just do one at a time. So I'll put my thumb just right there. And then when it comes to stripping this, um, how I do it is I just go very, very gently to score it, okay? We are not, uh, sorry, if I, sorry if you can't see this, but again, check out my other video about that. And then at the very, very end of this wire, so you can see right there, you cut through at the very, very end. And what that's gonna allow you to do is you can grab the end and you can pull it up just like this. And because we've scored it, it'll, it'll pull nice and easy up exactly to the point of where we um, started, okay? And then I don't cut across or anything like that. I just hold my thumb just like this, put the knife in there and we just cut. Boom, that's, that's how easy. Don't worry if, it's, if this isn't super clean or whatever. It just goes into the box and you're done. Uh, if you're trying to get super, super finicky and super organized, you're going to make, you know, you're going to screw something up. It's going to be hard, okay? So again, I'm just going to put my thumb right here. That's a good length of wire. Your wire doesn't need to be too long in the box, but you do want it to be, you know, a decent amount. And again, sorry if you can't see this, but again, at the very, very end, you just push hard and I'm just going to pull up and that's it. This is how easy it is and you're never going to screw up. You're never going to wreck your wire. I also have a wire down below. So again, the same thing. We're not just entering in the wire indirectly. We are just making a little bit of a service loop. I'm gonna drag, uh, get the wire from right here. Uh, I might do a little less service loop so that we can have what's called a pigtail. 
Usually when we are pulling our wires, so in this case, this box, we have three wires. And sometimes you want to have one a little bit longer than the other ones for a pigtail. Okay, so now when it comes to actually entering in our wires into the box, when it comes to a single gang, um, it doesn't really matter too much because it's pretty simple. You just have like a single device here. But you can see right here, we do have a, um, a, t a double gang, right? And sometimes it's nice to have your switch leg or, you know, device one come into the first one, device two come into like the other hole. And we'll talk more about that in the next video where uh, we will be um, splicing. But these are just things to talk about. So what I'm trying to say is which, you know, where should you put your wires? In this case, it's not a big of a deal because it's just a single device box. When you're getting into bigger boxes, sometimes where you're entering your wires is going to give you a nicer overall finish. So we'll just enter in the wires here. So um, how you do this is you want to bend the wire just a little bit, okay? It's a little trick, just, just about like that. And so what happens is when the wire goes in, okay? So the wire is gonna go in, and when it comes down, it will actually push out itself. Like you can see, I'm not even doing anything. And so if you have to work by yourself, for, imagine like you're on the other side of the wall, like imagine that drywall or plywood's on this wall, and you had to push the wire in, you can bend the wire and you, you can do, you can just get it in there by yourself. So there's one wire. Again, we're just going to bend it just gently. Don't bend too much because uh, it'll make your life hard. So just a little bend. And sometimes you do you just got to get your finger in there and, and, and just kind of guide it. And when it comes to wires, it's just all about protecting the wire, keeping things nice and clean. And Let's see. So yeah, there you go. So like that's the, that's the finish for that. I'm just gonna push the wires up here, get them out of the way a little bit, and then I will get the bottom wire in. Okay, so again, it doesn't really matter what side you're gonna put the, the wire into the box, um, but when it comes to a switch, um, they are on the right side of the device, so I'll probably just put it into the bottom left hole. Okay, you can see how I'm just kind of feeding it with the, with the right hand and then pulling with the left hand. Now this might look like a lot of wires. Again, this is just a single gang box. Once you get into more boxes, there's gonna be even more wires. That's why it's so important to label. Okay, we have our labels now. We didn't have to relabel because if we label up a little higher, when you cut off the jacket, you still have your label, pro tip. Um, now, when you work your way, the trick is just to work with your bonds first, do your neutrals and then your power and then you're left over with what's called your switch legs, which is what turns on and off the light. And that's the easiest way to approach this. And so we will do that in our next video where we're actually gonna splice this single gang box, okay? Hopefully I can get a nice good picture in there for you and you can see exactly what I'm doing. Check the YouTube playlist to watch the splicing video, okay? And uh, if you guys wanna stay updated with the website, go to becomingandelectrician.com forward slash subscribe. You can get my free book that I've written specifically for apprentice electricians. All right, things I wish I knew before I became a journeyman. A lot of things about you know how to present yourself, um, questions you should be asking your journeyman, and um, you will see a lot of a lot of success in your apprenticeship years. So that's it for this video. I'll talk to you when we're going to splice in this box in the next one.